Let's Get Down to Business is presented by Bravo, the marketing arm of Ash Brokerage Corporation, a practice enhancement company. All this week, it's the Advanced Insurance Sales Series. And on today's show, IRAs, IRA conversions, and Roth IRAs. And with me today is nationally recognized advanced sales expert and creator of Innsmark, Bob Ritter. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, Bob, welcome back to day four. Thank you. You doing all right? I'm fine. Boy, four days in a row with Steve Savant. Let me say, you're, we're punishing you. We're kind of continuing our theme today on the more lo- you know, good logic versus bad logic, but we're going to do it on a focus issue because one of the biggest client questions we have, and I, I answer 40, 50 blog answers from Consumers Direct, and one of the retirement questions that keep coming to me is, Steve, what about my traditional IRA, my Roth IRA, and should I convert it? Should I convert my traditional to IRA? What are the issues? And remember, this all has impact on distribution on retirement. Bob, when you put this together, why did you bring this up? Because this, to me, seems to be, it should be routine advisory thinking, strategy, and it isn't. Clients are so anti-income tax that unless you can prove the math, they Mm -hmm. have no interest in paying a lot of income tax to convert their IRAs to a Roth. Well, let's just talk about that for a second. We have a marginal tax bracket system. It's a marginal progressive tax bracket system. Okay. And I don't know, and I, I, some people don't like the phrase blended tax bracket, but I don't know how else to say it. I think it really, fundamentally it is, depending upon your exclusions, exemptions, deductions, and so forth. But when I'm looking at that, I'm sitting at a certain bracket, and it's progressive. Now, I could maybe convert my traditional IRAs over a period in time before I hit retirement, and that could maybe mitigate some of the tax issues. But you said it. Every time I bring up the idea of, Okay, we're setting you up for retirement. We're doing this now as a preemptive act, right? And the client says, you just pushed me from 22% to 29% blended all in effective tax bracket. How do they overcome that first blunt? It is, it, I have to say, it is a bit of shock and awe. You're going to pay a monster bill. Well, do you overcome it two ways? One way is to do it gradually so there's mm-hmm. less impact. And we can do that. We can show Roth conversions piecemeal. Mm-hmm. The other way is to say, let's take the worst possible case from an income tax point of view, but the best possible case from your Roth. Let's do it right away. And let's take the tax money out of your weakest asset, not out of your income. Mm-hmm. We'll pay the taxes out of your weakest asset, and then we'll run the numbers and let the math decide. Mm-hmm. And you'll be surprised. The math is incredibly in favor of doing the, math, doing the Roth. Mm-hmm. It is tough psychologically, though. Even though the math will make the call, I think people are, they have such an, a, an aversion. <laughs> A version for, I mean, who wants to pay taxes if you don't have to? So there could be offsetting things you could use to kind of mitigate that a little bit, but really you're paying a bit. But I think when people look at this as a proactive and preventative issue for their distributions in retirement, that can kind of ease some of the pain that they feel like they're going to they're gonna take on. And I think one of the big blunt issues is Social Security. If you have a decent sized Social Security number coming in, maybe 35 to 40,000 or above. Indexed. Yeah, indexed. This could be, this is where you could say, man, if I would have, if I had a Roth IRA, if I had converted before I started taking my Social Security, I'd be taking my Roth and my Social Security free. To me, that's worth looking at. And I think what you've done, and Bob, I have to say, and I say this with all due respect to all my colleagues out there, I don't think we're thinking in this multidimensional facet where we're incorporating ideas like, I know it sounds like you're going to have to pay a huge tax bill by converting, but... I think you need to look at this in the long haul and how it's going to impact your income and Social Security to keep more money overall. Do you think people can think like that? I do. And math, how do they argue that? Irrationally, right. if you prove it. Mm-hmm. It's got to be an irrational decision not to do it. When, you do your, when you're in front of advisors and 90% of your seminars are based on you talking to advisors, not the public, when you're talking to advisors, Bob, how do they see it? you get any pushback on this? No, uh, if this were your, talking to an advisor, if this were your client and these were the results, what would you recommend he do? I don't care whether you're going to have a little trouble with him on his taxes, you're going to talk to him about that, but mm-hmm. which would you recommend he do? Mm-hmm. It's going to be pretty obvious you're going to recommend. Is the client CPA or tax attorney or fiduciary, is he going to push back on this? They push back on where'd you get all these numbers from? Our system pardon the expression, vomits reports. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it does. You can get a 70-page report, but we back up every single number we do. The CPAs and attorneys love it because mm -hmm. where did that number come from? It came from this calculation over on mm -hmm. this page. So we do a tremendous amount of stuff for an appendix. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that, that's the only criticism, criticism I've seen from lawyers and CPAs on what's the verification for your number here. But if you can validate it through using Ismark, I mean, this to me is, if you're, if you're trying to get into the fiduciary market, maybe it's CPAs, attorneys, or even trust officers, and you're looking for a way to go in, I think sometimes Ismark in itself, instead of just using it as your analytic software, this could be an evangelistic tool to get you in front of these three or four markets. To me, that'd be huge because maybe you can't get in, but you say, when I do a, an, an analysis for my client, this is what you get. And if you need a ream of detail, Insmark can provide it. Do you think that's a huge value added? I do, I do. And I'll tell you, some of our best users are licensed lawyers, insurance licensed lawyers and CPAs, who probably grasp this intuitively mm -hmm. quicker, mm -hmm. CPAs particularly. Do you see, I'm just a little curious, do you see the CPA and attorneys coming into our business oh, more and more? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I've seen a huge influx of that and they're coming into our practice, they're getting licensed. And they need help. And they need help, yeah. Yeah, because they don't know our product side. No. They know the math side of this, but they don't know our product side. To me, this is where, I, again, I just I want to underscore this. We're always looking for an edge. We're always looking for distinction to cut us out of the pack against another advisor. To me, using Insmark maybe as an evangelistic tool into the fiduciary market could be the play. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussions on IRAs, IRA conversions, and Roth IRAs, and the many options available for a good, logical decision-making process. And don't forget Bob's free trial offer to take Insmark for a spin. Insmark.com forward slash free offer forward slash ash. And remember, you can also sign up for your own 30-day free trial offer from Backroom Technician at brtnow.com forward slash trial sign up dot ASPX. We'll be right back after the break. Take a close look at your hard-earned dollar. How do you think your money's doing? Are you keeping an eye on it? Is it protected from taxes, inflation, and market risk? Over time, those Washingtons could become Franklins. With Tax Advantaged Indexed Universal Life, from one of the largest distributors of Index Universal Life, Ash Brokerage. Well, welcome back everyone. I'm Steve Savant with Bob Ritter. And remember, you can watch all our episodes of Let's Get Down to Business, including my weekly consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game, right at ashbrokerage.com. Just click on the show's logo on the homepage. It'll take you right out to our archives. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you ever hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor or your legal counsel, as well as your broker-dealer compliance officer. Well, let's get down to business. We're talking about IRAs, IRA conversions, and Roth IRAs, and the many options available for a good, logical decision-making process. Okay, well, welcome back to the second segment. You know, we're talking about to convert a Roth or not to convert to Roth, and this is a mathematical equation. We're just going to look at the numbers. What you've done here in your case study four is you've taken this idea of wealth replacement trust, funding it and looking at how can I make this happen and make the best money decision with the product or the actual asset I have in my hand at the time. When I look at this, we've talked about some of the pushback that clients might give at first because nobody wants to pay taxes and I'm right there with you. But sometimes it's better to pay up front than it is for this long haul retirement scenario. And as you said, I've heard you say this in, in other uh, seminars, you wanna push that as far back as you can to really make, really milk your money for what it can be done, net after tax, net after all expenses. But when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at another good logic reason of why Roth IRAs are a real powerhouse in your distribution in your, during your retirement. And converting some of this, even though we have to kind of have a little cholesterol while we're doing this, we're gonna have to pay some tax, this is a pretty good way to do it. Let's look at these graphs because to me, they're, you know, if a picture paints a thousand words, right, a graph has to be worth at least 10, you know, a thousand, right? Let's look at this here. Walk me through this graph of why this makes such a powerful difference. Well, we did two things. On, on a take, taking the top graph for a second, we did two things. We converted the Roth. Uh, it was a million dollar Roth. And we assumed there's just a monster tax on it paid. And it's, if you could make a client understand that sometimes a tax payment is a good investment, which is really what we're talking mm -hmm. about here, 
because you're trading out for better tax treatment. Well, I mean, later. this guy could have been paying 300 grand on this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe more, marginally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I did one other thing there. So we've got the tax bite coming out, and I've, I've, I've got a gift to the trust, I think, of $20,000 a year to buy a fairly good sized, a couple million dollars of second to die life insurance on, on, on him and his wife. Uh, which means that the green line has been backed off some. Remember it was 16 million before? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the red line. I'm doing this now against the best I had before. And, and remember, uh, uh, Bob's referring to our yesterday's show. So if you didn't see that, you know, don't not figure out what he's talking about. Again, I, I always recommend watching the day before so you yes. understand what we're using the same person in throughout all our that's studies. That's kind of critical for, for this. So the 16 is the best we had yesterday. By converting to Roth, uh, we were able to actually enhance value, which I pulled back a little bit because we made gifts to the trust. Mm -hmm. I think that 19 would have been like 22 had I not done the gifts to the trust, mm -hmm. but well ahead of the red in any event. Mm -hmm. And then down below is the effect of having done it on the heirs. Instead of the heirs getting 14 million out of the 16 million, they're now getting 26 million. And I'm still providing the cash flow I need for retirement. Yep, same 25000 I mean, that, That's the same money coming out. A month. Okay, and remember, we're, again, we're, we're referring to yesterday's show, so you need to kind of watch that to see how all these graphs. And remember, you say, Steve, I'd look, can I have an examples of all this? Just go ahead and write me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com, and I'll send it to you. When I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, okay, I, I, th this is the easy part. It's, it's still, I'm still at the front end preamble where we're sitting there going, wow, I might have paid three hundred and. $300,000, $350,000 in taxes to move my taxable IRA to a non-taxable Roth IRA. Based on this, though, the recapture is huge. So I, I'm going to get this back. Talk to me about well, that, because I think people say, I've lost it forever, that's but you it's, said it's an investment. It's, it's a, it's a, your tax payment has become an investment in this mm -hmm. example. Well, let's talk about that, because that's how I think you have to go. You say, would you take 300, I guess, let's just remove the government for a second, because maybe that's the obstacle. If I said, give me 350,000 in taxes, but we're not gonna use that word for a second, I had to pay 350,000, what am I getting in return, Bob? What am I getting for that? I already, got, I want my income, that's one thing. What am I getting for that money? Well, you're getting uh, $3 million long range that you didn't have before. And you're getting, um, 12 million long range for your kids that you didn't have before. Now, if you want the 3 million to be higher, you cut the amount to the kids. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you eliminated the kids entirely, I think that's closer to 26 million. But even people. conservatively, if you just said, if I'm throwing 3 million down for, what was that? Or, I'm sorry, $300,000 down to receive. Uh, well, the difference between uh, 16 and. It's like 3 million. Yeah, so 3 I mean, million, right. Yeah, so right. if I'm looking, it says 10 to one. I'm looking at the leverage of 10 to one. Would I give up 350,000 as an investment to get 10 to one? And my answer would be, well, of course I would. If somebody said your CD all of a sudden is gonna be worth 350,000 less than it was the day before, but this is gonna happen, I don't think you'd think about it. Right. But now that I put the name tax on it, you don't wanna do it. Right. Doesn't right. make any sense. There's a version. But here's what I like about this. This is kind of a, this is kind of a play for people who really like uh, to fund government through high revenue. I mean, we're gonna give you the 350,000 because if you just maintain the tax code so I can use it the way it is on the back end, I think there's a pretty good trade off for everybody concerned. Yep. But I think getting over that, I love the way you position it. If I'm just throwing down 300,000 to 350,000 in taxes and I'm getting a 10 to one leverage on that at the end game, I think that's worth looking at. And to me, that's where we need to go on this. Here again, Ensmark is, or Wealthy and Wise is doing this for you, these calculations, and are putting this in here so you can look at a comparison. It's so visual, I can't underscore this. It's so visual to a client because I think statistics are one thing. I think graphs like this lay it out. It's easy to read. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our show for today. Remember, you can read all my online insurance news commentary, advisor blogs, and articles on Producers Web, as well as my answers to consumer questions on the insurance library. And don't forget to view any of our past episodes at our on-demand section located at www.downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. So don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or just email me, steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor.